It's just about nonfiction November, so I'm here to recommend five titles for your nonfiction November TBR. So let's get started. Welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing absolutely fantastic. It is about that time. Nonfiction November is right around the corner. Now, I don't tend to participate a ton in no Nonfiction November because I don't read a ton of nonfiction. However, this year I have been reading a ton of memoirs and have gotten some nonfiction that I really, really think fit a bunch of bills and will really be great reads for you during this month. So, as always, Get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you keep control of your TBR. Also, if you can pre-order or order these books from your local independent bookstore, please do so, and or get them at your library or have your library order them. I will say Berkeley is sitting right here staring at me, so he may come and try to be part of the conversation. So if he does, we will say hi to him, or he just may sigh over here on the side waiting for me to give him attention. That may be it. I find as I talk in my videos that I keep leaning forward and forward and forward until I'm almost like this. So that's really strange. It's because I just want to get closer and closer to you guys. Um, but let's get started with the books for nonfiction November. I will tell you that they are memoir heavy because that is really the nonfiction that I've been focusing on. And three of the five books are out now and two of them come out in November. So you can get your hands on all of them before nonfiction November is over. Let's start with the book that I've talked about in many a video because I think everyone should read it. And that is The Yellow House by Sarah M. Broom. This book is the story of Sarah M. Broom's family and the house that they live in in New Orleans, Louisiana. Took me a minute there took me a minute there. Um, so it sort of starts at the beginning. Um, it's 1961. Her mother is actually widowed really early and winds up marrying another man who is Sarah's father. They buy a house and they're sort of building the house up. They wind up having 12 children together until Sarah's father passes away right after her birth. And her mom, sort of the way that the book is, is structured is the house becomes her 13th child and most unruly child. And this is sort of, you know, the 60s was right after the space race. There was a NASA facility right near there. Things were sort of looking in a certain direction. And as you guys know, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the world changed so dramatically that um, Sarah sort of follows her family in this house through all of those time periods. This book is currently shortlisted for the National Book Award for Nonfiction. And um, I've read probably like a third of it, and it is brilliant. And that is The Yellow House by Sarah M. Broom. Out now. Get your hands on it. Read it. You will love it. I promise. The next one is also, actually, I'm not going to say, I'll tell you the one that isn't a memoir. How about that? Ordinary Girls by Shakira Diaz is out now from Algonquin Books. This is the story about growing up Latina and queer. It's, sep it's sort of two places, Puerto Rico and Miami Beach, I believe. Yes. Um, her family is split apart as her mother battles schizophrenia. She was supported by the love of her friends. Um, and then it talks about her struggling with depression and her own sexual assaults and sexual identity. I heard Jakira Diaz speak at um, Book Expo America this year, and she was amazing. I know she's currently on her book tour for this book. If you get a chance, please, please go see her. Um, I really do think that this book is just a power punch of a little uh, memoir. So that is Ordinary Girls, a memoir by Jakira Diaz. Okay, and a book that I have talked about again because there are so many good memoirs this year. That is How We Fight Our For Our Lives by Saeed Jones. Congratulations to Mr. Jones on recently winning the Kirkus Prize for nonfiction. This is a memoir about his life in, I want to say it's really in threefold. It's about him. He lives in Louisville, Louisville, I always get Louisville, Texas, she, growing up as a black young man in Louisville, Texas, in a time period where there's a lot going on regarding um, incidences of um, black men being killed and shot by the police, how that sort of creates your racial identity. Also, he is a queer young black man, so he's dealing with sort of the implications of what happened with Matthew Shepard and how that forms his narrative. Also, this is a story about a relationship between his mom, 
and a mom and a son um, and the struggles that they have also together. Um, this book is powerful and I bawled my eyes out at the end of this book. I really, I did. I really, really did. He winds up going to Western Kentucky University where he really comes into his sexuality and his awakening where an, a horrible incident occurs that really sort of grounds him and who he is and the decisions he's making regarding his sexuality. I'm not going to give it away um, because I want you guys to experience that. But Saeed Jones by nature is a poet and this book reads like poetry. It is heart-wrenching and gorgeous and just perfect. And that is How We Fight for Our Lives by Saeed Jones. Okay, the next two books come out in November. And um, so I will tell you to pre-order them and have them on your list. One is this amazing, amazing memoir called In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. This is coming out from Grey Wolf Press. Now, this is Carmen Marie Machado's memoir regarding her abusive relationship with her, I believe her first girlfriend, and their relationship as it comes through time. The sort of the structure of this, the dream house that this book talks about is this house that, that they rent together while well, her partner at the time rents in Indiana, where she is going to um, get her MFA. Carmen is in Iowa getting her MFA. And this house is sort of be, supposed to be where they build their relationship. And it's sort of this dream idea of this perfect relationship, this perfect house that she's going to share with this woman that she loves. However, that relationship goes toxic. And the house then becomes sort of a character as Carmen constantly reminds us of the incidents that occur within the house, within the framework of that house identity. What she also brilliantly does in this book is she sort of gives you a history of the idea of abuse within queer relationships. For a long time, this idea that queer relationships couldn't have mental, metal, blah, blah, mental and physical abuse in them because they were relationships between parties of the same gender and how it was rather dismissed. What I really thought was brilliant about this is when Carmen is dealing with the relationship in and of itself and the difficult things that this woman had done to her, um, she switches to the second person as if she is talking to a you. You, this happened to you. So she almost takes a step back from her own story because of the pain. And I just thought that that was so interesting and so well done. Carmen Maria Machado, as you guys may know, she wrote Her Body and Other Parties, which was a short story collection that was shortlisted for the National Book Award a couple of years ago now. She is a phenomenal writer, and this book is brilliant. At times, poetry. At times, heart-wrenching. At times, hopeful. As Carmen comes to the sense of her own identity, who she is, and also learning to sort of love herself, through all of this instances as well. And you learn a lot about psychology and uh, the queer identity within this sort of conundrum of abuse within a relationship. It, yeah, it, this, you guys, this, this book is worth every minute you will spend in it. So that is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. And again, this is out in November. You can get your hands on it from Grey Wolf Press. Just take a moment, the cover is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Last but not least is a book that actually came to me very, very recently, and it also comes out in November, and I am fascinated by it, and that is The Crying Book by Heather Crystal? Crystal? I'm going to say that. Oh, let me hold that up there so you guys can see it. One, is that cover not gorgeous? And this is out uh, by Catapult, and this is exactly what you think it is. It is a meditation on the human act of crying, and it says... Heather Crystal explores the most human of behaviors, crying. What are tears made of? Why do people cry? And why this common, crucial act so rarely discussed? Crystal unpacks the biological reason for tears and investigates the influence of crying on art, politics, feminism, race, and culture, all while opening up in the intimate personal story of her own tears from the suicide of her close friend to her family's history of depression to her pregnancies both planned and unplanned. Whew, I may be reading this one pretty soon, and I have a feeling, I know this sounds silly to say, 
there are going to be tears. And so that is The Crying Book by Heather Crystal. Again, this is out from Catapult. And this comes out in November. I want to say it comes out on November 5th. I apologize. I don't know the exact date. But get your hands on it. It will fit into nonfiction November. I absolutely promise. So there you go. I'm going to stack that a little bit differently. Those are five titles for you for nonfiction November. Five amazing books that I think will really fit the bill for the month and also probably touch the heart, teach the brain, and just stay with you longer than a single reading experience. As always, I really, really thank you if you're a return subscriber. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much. I hope you stay around and that you come back for more. As always, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and until next time, happy reading. Bye!